Hello gents and welcome to our video on section 7.3 entitled thermochemistry and cooking fuels. First thing, let's define what thermochemistry is. Thermochemistry is the study of heat effects that accompany a chemical reaction. So it's basically in thermochemistry we measure the quantities of heat gained and heat loss in a chemical reaction and that process in general is called the thermochemistry of the reaction. We've talked about heat being lost and heat being gained in a previous section. So when energy, heat, or heat is gained or lost, we describe the reaction as endothermic or exothermic. Now, when, when describing something as endothermic or exothermic, we know that we must first take into consideration or must observe whether we're talking about the system or our surroundings. Again, our system is what we're focused on. So in our investigation, maybe my coat can was my system and the surroundings was everything around it. So heat going into the system would be an endothermic process, if the can is actually my system that I'm focusing on. Now in our investigation, we <clears throat> experimented with different fuel sources and saw how much energy output um, they had when burned. So energy was released as we burned our fuels. Since energy was released totally, meaning that can got hotter, that was an exothermic process overall that reaction so when the when that fuel was burned it released heat that's where we're going fuel was burned it released heat making it exothermic but the question is where does this energy come from now we've talked about this in the past but let's clarify it and this board seems a little congested but bear with me step by step so in a chemical reaction, in this case we're talking about combustion reactions, but this is true for any reaction. So in a chemical reaction, bonds are broken. So my reactants come together, collide, pff, bonds are broken. When the reactants absorb energy from the surroundings, meaning I put a match to light that fuel on fire, they absorb that match heat, and the reactants absorb the energy from the surroundings, which, were the, which was the match, that's an endothermic process. And then we have a chemical reaction, and then for my products, bonds form. When the products form, they release energy to the surroundings. That's the exothermic process. Now, depending on which energy change is largest, is going to determine whether our entire reaction was endothermic or exothermic. Now, here's an example. Say I have CH4, which is methane. It reacts with two oxygen molecules and creates carbon dioxide and two molecules of water. To make this a little more understandable, I broke it down to Lewis structures. So this is methane here, carbon attached to single bonded hydrogens. So methane reacts with two molecules of water, I mean sorry, of oxygen, O2, creating carbon dioxide and two molecules of water. Now, in order for these reactants to react together, I need activation energy. I need to get enough activation energy to have this collision take place so I would get that from an external source like a match or something of that nature and molecules would come together and collide in order for these bonds to break these bonds here we're talking so you know these bonds they're gonna break and when they break we have to account for this as well something we haven't talked about much but in these bonds already what's here is stored energy. There's energy already in those bonds. And that's why we need so much energy, activation energy, to break them. Because there's already energy in there, and we have to break them apart. When we do that, and create our products, so we, well, we add this energy in, these atoms break apart from the other atoms, they form the activated complex, and then they form the products. And when that happens, energy is released when new bonds form. We got that. So when these new bonds form, Etc. energy is released. Now here's the catch. The energy to break the bonds of the reactants is less than the energy released to create the bonds in the product. So in a combustion reaction, we know that we feel heat. We feel heat from combustion because the energy to break the bonds of my reactants is less than the energy that <clears throat> is released when the bonds, or sorry, when the bonds in the product are formed. This extra energy that is released to the surroundings 
is called an exothermic reaction, or makes my reaction exothermic. So that extra energy that's existing, once these are made, we feel that heat and we call it exothermic. Now, one type of fuel that we actually had in the laboratory that we haven't talked about much is an alcohol fuel. Alcohol fuels contain the hydroxyl group. You notice the hydroxyl group looks kind of like OH minus, the hydroxide polyatomic ion. It's not hydroxide in this case because we're not talking about OH minus, we're talking about an oxygen attached to a hydrogen that's bonded covalently to something else. So an alcohol is a hydrocarbon in which a hydrogen atom is replaced with a hydroxyl group. An example, here's a hydrocarbon, methane, C within H4s, I mean 4Hs, excuse me, CH4, that's methane. If I replace one of these hydrogens with a hydroxyl group, like this, it's no longer methane, but it is methanol. So usually we just add the OL to the ending of our word, taking off that last E. And that would be a conversion from methane to methanol. These are fuels that can burn just like any other hydrocarbon. So I would have methanol plus O2, plus, plus O2 creating carbon dioxide and water. This is our lesson, gentlemen, for today. Take notes. Adios.